Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. Wow, today feels very magical in my world, and I'm excited to share this energy with you. Um, it's not so much an external shift, it's more of an internal shift for me. Um, it's actually quite rainy outside and gloomy. Um, but for me, there has been a lot of internal things happening where my view of reality is upgraded. Let's just put it that way. Um, and that is very exciting. And I'm excited to share some of this process with you. So let's dive right into it. Ah, have you ever heard of something called internal family systems? So this is a therapy modality. It's talking about, talking about it uses um, the idea around like that there's different parts of our psyche that need different things. And sometimes when we have trauma, a part of our psyche gets like frozen in that moment in time. And internal family systems like helps you to go back to these moments where we've had trauma and like talk to these different parts, like directly talk to like the seven year old version of you that was traumatized and ask it what it needs, ask it how we can understand it and also ask it like, how can we heal this? You know? Um, so I have been hanging out with my friend Neo, the one that I shared in my last podcast and he is a, a internal family systems um, therapist. And so I've been learning more about it and it's been really beautiful to learn more about it. And, um, so I was interested myself to like do, do a session. So I, uh, he recommended a therapist for me. I didn't want to do one with him. I, I find it like best to keep friends, friends and not necessarily your therapist as your friend. Uh, boundaries are great within dynamics. <laughs> um, so that was my own intuition and I'm glad I honored that because he recommended a really beautiful therapist for me. Um, and I did a session this weekend and wow, there were parts of my psyche that had been completely locked away for, I don't know, 20 years or more. And, um, being able to access these parts of myself and give them the love that they deserve and the protection and the understanding and the healing. It has <laughs> basically like I did the therapy Saturday night. I did the session Saturday night on Zoom and all of yesterday, Sunday, I ha was crying off and on all day long. And of course, there was external things happening in my reality, but like normally I probably wouldn't react to these things with crying. <laughs> um, but I think because I was so feeling in touch with myself and able to access more of, it's like more of myself came complete in my psyche. I don't know how to put that into words, but it's like, like more of myself was available to access and be in every situation. And also because I had access to more of myself, I felt this like coming home and that feeling of being more at home within myself was so refreshing and relieving that it was just making me cry like randomly throughout the day. Um, and also something that I realized um, within this whole thing was that like something like some stuff happened yesterday where on the surface, it could have caused a negative reaction from me. Um, and I have an interesting reaction to things in general. It's very different than other people. Um, I'm learning <laughs> because when something happens externally, I always view it as an opportunity for me to trust the universe. So for instance, um, where uh, someone else might freak out, I would just I literally say to myself sometimes out loud, stay in your center, stay in your center. How is this an opportunity? How is this happening for me? And I might look like a crazy person to some people. For me, this really works. And um, there's two things to this. Um, one is I really do believe that the more that we trust the universe and the more that we're like really 
following the divine flow that is our life plan. Like we have a divine plan that was meant for us, each one of us do. And when we're allowing ourselves to follow our intuition and really be able, so staying in your center is like staying clear enough within yourself in order to understand what is happening, what's coming through you. Like I really believe our bodies are vessels for our souls to play this game of life. And of course we, we are equally part of this, you know, like we get a say in this. And also if we allow our soul, the universe, God, whatever you want to call it to guide us, it's going to feel the best in our body. We're going to be on path in the way that feels the best for us. And the only thing that will take us out of this being on path or feeling guided and all this stuff is when we start doubting it is when we start going into the fear it's when we start literally freaking out (laughs) you know and it's a very normal human thing to freak out and i so this is where the polarity i think and where i'm finding the balance is um because of this therapy that i did this weekend i realized that also part of my programming is uh, um for most of my life, not really having a space within myself and within the situations I was in in order to really allow myself the full scope of emotions because I was literally like just in um, survival mode for most of my life. Uh, And even though nowadays I'm not in survival mode within my reality, I think there's still things in my psyche where when things go wrong, instead of allowing myself to feel it and just be like, oh, I'm feeling all these things. Um, It's like part of me just goes straight into the higher self version of me, which is like, it's fine. Everything's going to work out. And I think this is the real duality of our existence um, because your physical mind is here to create a safe space for you and literally to keep your body alive and to keep you alive in this, in this lifetime. Right? So, um, this is why your physical mind is always like trying to make sure everything's okay. And like, you know, like, are we on track? Do we have enough money? Are we going the right direction in life? Blah, 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 blah. Because it wants you to be safe and it wants you to feel, you know, secure and all this, like security, safety. These are the things that the physical mind is here for. And that's beautiful. Our higher self, our soul, you know, the bigger part of us that's in spirit understands that we're always safe and that we're always guided and protected. We're here in this physical dimension to have a human experience. So for me, this is like the really funny joke, the cosmic joke of life is like, where is the balance between both of these things? So like, where is the balance between feeling it all and allowing yourself to be like freaking out because you're like, what the fuck is going on? I don't know what just happened. Like, I just got like a wrench thrown into this plan that I had, which is also a funny thing because like, you know, they say like you make a plan and then God does whatever he wants anyways. So, um, so where's the balance between feeling whatever it is coming through whatever feelings are alive in you and allowing yourself the space to feel those things because that is also part of having the human experience and then the other side is being like okay I'm allowing myself to have this physical ex- um, feeling I'm allowing myself to have these feelings and also I'm fully in the knowingness that this is going to work out this is going to work out for me everything works out for me everything is happening for me um So, uh, this is still a work in progress for myself. I think it is maybe for all of us. I think if people are acting like they know what they're doing, they're just lying, you know, like (laughs) I do believe that I am able to ride this wave a lot more fluidly than most people. Um, most probably because I've had so many experiences in my life where I really was at this point of like, stepping off it's like metaphorically feeling like you're just stepping off a ledge you know like this like I don't know if I'm gonna fall or if I'm gonna fly um and because I've had so many of these opportunities to trust the universe and to really dive into the unknown I have learned through lived experience that the universe really does have my back and everything really is working out for me and everything 
is happening for my best case scenario. And especially when I trust the universe, it's like it's already always working out. But when I trust it and I'm allowing myself to be in that trust, it just saves me a lot of heartache (laughs) and a lot of just freaking out and like anxiety. (laughs) Um, I'll give you an example. Like um, in, I think it was the beginning of 20... Yeah, beginning of 2019, end of 2018, I um, got flown to India to speak at a conference for digital nomads and co-working. It was for a co-working, a co-working conference. I was a consultant to help launch co-working spaces around Asia for many years. And um, they were doing a conference in India around this. And so it was a lot of people who owned co-working spaces, a lot of digital nomads, just like the whole scene of people who work remotely, people who are supporting remote workers, blah, blah, blah. And because I had like launched a lot of the remote working, the digital nomad scene in Asia, they were very excited for me to come out. They hosted me, let me stay, like I stayed like with them in their houses and um, the people who owned the co-working spaces with their families and their kids. And it was so beautiful. I, I like learned how like Indian, you know, arranged marriages work, which I found really interesting because they're basically like saying it's like tender, but your auntie is the one who arranges stuff. And the whole thing was very fascinating, but I love going into cultures and just like deep diving from the ground and like understanding how their culture works and doing my best to have an objective um, perspective on everything. Anyway, so I was in India and um, I, you know, I'd been based in Thailand for mit- for many years. So um, probably for f- since 2016. So this was probably three years up until this point. Um, I had been based in Thailand and I was just like, I want to do something bigger. I want to, instead of, I always feel like I need to do something more. I need to do something more. <laughs> I don't know. This is my rising Aquarius. I'm always like, I need to do something more to help the collective. Um and so I, um, I got this idea that I wanted to create my, the guy I was dating at the time was a filmmaker for National Geographic and, um, he had just quit his job. He was like working with like Dave and up uh, David Attenborough and like all this stuff, um, for the discovery channel. And, um, anyways, he, he, so he's very skilled in what he did. And he fell in love with me in Bali. And then eventually he moved out to Thailand where I was living. And, you know, we had a love story, right? And so he came with me to India. And I said to him, I was like, why don't we create a YouTube series where we go around uh, Europe and we... (laughs) <laughs> and we interview all of my friends who own co co-working and co-living spaces around Europe. And we just like make this show about like how remote work is the thing. Cause I was like, I always was promoting remote work, remote work and trying to get companies to let their employees work remotely. Uh, this again, this is before COVID. So I was doing this for many years and, um, and he was like, yeah, sounds good. Let's do it. Um, so, at this point I had not started a YouTube channel. So I was like, let's do a YouTube series. I had no YouTube followers. Um, I was barely on social media. I was mostly just working on the ground with my community. So, and then I was like, I want to get this sponsored. I want to get this funded. And I asked myself like, who could I get to fund this? And I had tons of friends who worked for like service providers for co-working spaces. Um, Long story short, I reached out to all of them and they were like, okay, maybe we can sponsor your program, but we need some time to think about it. Well, the, the, my friends who own the co-living spaces, they were like, we need you to come out during these time periods because otherwise we're fully booked like for the summer. And so there was this moment of like stepping off the ledge in the sense that we were in India. We had, we were like, do we go back to Thailand or do we go to Europe? without understanding if it, the whole project's going to be funded, um, without knowing whether we're going to do this on our own, you know, our own money, or if it's someone else is going to pay for it. And I just was like, I know it's going to work. Let's just go. Let's just go. We will, you know, like, we will get this all funded. We'll get this all paid for. 
and my boyfriend at the time was like, are you sure? And I was like, yes, I fully trust the universe that like, I just could feel that I was meant to do this, you know, like I was meant to go on this journey, this epic adventure, meet all these people, put it all on film and just share it with the world. And so we get on the plane to, and the first location we're at is in Spain. Some of my very good friends at Sun and Co. It's a co-living space in the south of Spain. And uh, we're there and we're like halfway through the week. And I remember like we did this big family dinner uh, with the whole group. There was like 30 people that lived in this co-living space for that month. And we're like filming all week. And we still like didn't know if we were going to get funded. And then suddenly I got an email from one of the main uh, people who were thinking to sponsor us. And they were like, we are going to, we basically like, we believe in you and we're going to like set aside our whole budget for this, like this year, like our whole marketing budget and like give it towards you and the project so that we'll sponsor you. They, and then, so, and then a couple other people ended up coming through after that. So total, we ended up getting like $20,000 in sponsorship. And I just remember when I read the email, I was like, <laughs> it was kind of this like moment of like free falling and flying at the same time. Cause I was like, I knew it was going to work. I already was in the knowingness that we were going to get sponsored, that somehow the money was going to come through. And because I just felt like I was meant to be doing this. Like I was meant to be sharing this with the world. And then when we got, when I got the email, I just ran to John, my, the, my partner at the time. And I was just like, Oh my God, it worked. And then like, I was like jumping up and down and we were like high-fiving each other and hugging. And then everyone else in the Colvin space, cause we were having this big family dinner. They were like, what happened? What happened? I'm like, we got funded. And everyone was celebrating with us. And it was just this moment of like, I knew it. I was in the knowingness. It's working out. It's totally working out for us. Like as long as we stay in the trust and we follow the intuition, that's the thing is I am so deeply connected to my intuition and my intuition is like always giving me these very clear signals of what I'm meant to do next. Um, and it's beautiful because that series, that YouTube series came out like towards like the, we got published it like towards the end of 2019 and then COVID hit in 20. 20. So like a lot of those videos ended up helping a lot of people working remotely and ended up like promoting me as a remote work consultant. And then I got a lot of, um, a lot of consulting jobs from that because a lot of teams in 2020 needed help like transitioning to remote work because they were all just like dropped into it. So it definitely led to the next thing that I was meant to do in the world. And to me, that's like really beautiful when you allow yourself, even when you're like, I have no fucking clue how this is going to work out, but I trust because I have an intuition that we're meant to go this direction. And that is to me like really following the universal flow and also, I really want to say that you're allowed to feel your feelings. Like it's so important to allow yourself to feel whatever is coming through, because if you don't allow yourself to feel it and you suppress it, it's just going to come out later or it's going to be in the back of your mind, like looping, which I think is even worse because when you, when you have this like low key underground anxiety that ends up like hijacking your whole system. So this is also something I learned in internal family systems is like, if you're having anxiety, it's a part of you that needs to be addressed. It's something in you that is calling for your attention. And instead of getting angry at it or suppressing it, it's really good to sit in meditation and really ask this part of yourself, okay, what do you need? Like, what are you scared of? How can I show up for you? And this is kind of like what we would hope that like our therapist would do for us or our friends or people that love us, right? And this is what we can do for ourselves when we start having these tools to like really host ourselves. Hosting yourself is like holding space for whatever emotions and whatever needs to come through, whatever process you're in emotionally. And um, you are completely capable of doing this. Um, we all are. And I think that's why I wanted to share this with you because I feel like, wow, the more that we're able to do this for ourselves, the more our lives are just going to get better and better. And also the more that we will be able to do this for each other, you know, because we're only able to host other people that we love 
for as deep as we are able to host ourselves. And this is something that I recognized yesterday was that like, you know, I want to be able to host my friends in this way um, where we can hold the duality of like, okay, this really sucks right now. And this is what I realized too, is like, I love when I have, I have like a couple of really close friends where like we can call each other and we can just talk about how much things are like, how scared we are, you know, like how much things suck right now in whatever way, like something happened. Oh my gosh, I'm freaking out. And then we know that by able, by, by sharing this, the goal of the conversation is to get back into the knowingness. So it's like hosting this for each other. Okay. I've had the space where I'm like freaking out and now where are we in the knowingness? How are we trusting the universe that it's all working out? And then by the end of the conversation, we're like joking about the fact that life is just ridiculous and it's magical. And like, how are we complaining? We live on a magical I- tropical paradise island and like everything that we've ever wanted has ever always come to us. And just kind of like reminding ourselves that it's okay and that everything's working out and everything's happening for us. And to me, that is the kind of friendship that I really appreciate. And that's the kind of, that's just, that, that's, that is what is really supportive and nourishing for me is someone who can hold space, remind me of my power, remind me that I'm, you know, guided and, and protected by the universe. And then at the end of it, just laugh about it. You know, like at the end of the day, we cannot take things too seriously. Life is already serious enough. If we're already going through life and we're taking everything so seriously, it's like, what is the point of any of this if we're not having fun? Like that's where I'm at. So I invite more play into your life and I invite you to really enjoy your life and and to be in the knowingness that you are always guided and protected and you are so much more powerful than you realize and that when you allow yourself to understand where you have come from and why you have these certain parts that are having anxiety or fear, when you just do your best to be in the knowingness, do your best to slow down and understand why this is happening, why these parts are acting this way, and you create space for that understanding, a lot of times the anxiety or the negative emotions, they are able to move through your body and release. It's when we judge ourselves and it's when we suppress these emotions that they get bigger because it it is a valid part of ourselves that is trying to protect us. And when we don't listen to it, it just, it's going to like the alarm bells are just going to ring more and more. Right. So, um, Anyways, that's some stuff that has been going on in my life. (laughs) Uh, In general, everything is going really well. I'm drinking my iced chocolate. I've been doing a lot more um, human design readings now that I've gotten back and more settled. So if you're interested in those, I made a video talking about that, like what is a human design reading? You can also reach out to me. And it's really beautiful because right now in my life, I have been focused on how can I impact like more beautiful souls? So like more one to many, like me, like do it. So what I mean by that is like courses and retreats and like group coaching and stuff like this. So like how can me as one person impact like more people and then what's beautiful is as I made that intention I had a couple of you amazing souls ask me to do personal coaching and what I realized is the reason why I'll just say it in the positive these people that have come forward they resonate with me so much like the work that we are doing together is so aligned and is impacting them in such a positive way and it makes me feel so good that I'm empowering them that I was like oh it made me fall in love with one-on-one coaching again like I was just like this is this is like this is also part of my life's work you know so I'm just saying that if there is I have space for one or two more of this 
one-on-one coaching. So if you feel like your story aligns with my story and there's something that you feel like I can benefit you in, in guiding you or holding space for you, please reach out to me on Instagram at Brittany Bond and we can see if we can work together. And I'm saying this like kind of just declaring it to the universe because I thought that I had like closed that box and then like a couple of you came forward and I've just been really enjoying the work that we are doing together. And and this is where I'm like, this is what I'm here for, you know, is to like empower, especially those of you who are like, I'm here to be leaders for the collective. Like I'm here to, and I don't need, maybe you don't even know what that means yet, but you can just feel it that you're meant for something bigger than what you're currently doing. And that's, oh, wow. That's so uh, exciting for me to empower those of you who are willing and wanting to step into this leadership role because right now we are very much on the beginning of like we're just barely entering in the age of Aquarius and this goes in for 200 years and what this means is we are just barely coming into a spiritual awakening per- time period for the collective like for the whole world this is happening you notice this is happening because suddenly there's a lot of spiritual communities popping up everywhere Um, And also just in general, the world is going through a lot of um, transformation in many different ways. And this is like, the way I like to describe it is like collectively, like the mass consciousness is facing a lot of its own shadows right now. And it's choosing, has a choice whether it's going to stay in fear or it's going to step into a higher vibration and come from, you know, trusting and being the knowingness excuse me, it's trusting and being the knowingness and being coming from a vibration of unconditional love, which is the vibration of what makes the whole universe. Because of that, because we're just barely entering this, there is a lot of people who are waking up spiritually. They do not have that many tools and they do not have that many role models and they need a lot of help. Um, they need leadership. They need they need a safe container to drop into, they, a safe community to drop into. Like the, it's like when I think of someone waking up spiritually, I think of like a newborn baby, in the sense that like they're like, wait, what? This is how reality works. Like I have just been asleep, and now I'm like, I need to learn how to eat again and walk and do all these things. And from a spiritual perspective, this is a lot of people. They are just barely learning how to interact in the world from a higher vibration which is so beautiful i i love this you know like i think it's really amazing and also i take it very seriously to to be a good role model you know to and and what i feel i view as like a good leader for like the this higher vibration whatever you want to call it new earth community whatever for me, uh, being a good leader is walking in my own authenticity and using whatever platform I have, so my podcast, my Instagram, whatever, to empower all of you that you can be your own leader. Because old world mentality is is tyranny, is like, follow me, I'm the cult leader, we're going this direction, you know, you, you fall in line or you get kicked out. New earth leadership is I am my own individual I got my own stuff going on I'm authentic I understand that I'm always growing myself as a person and also if anything that I can share with you can help you fall into your you know trust your own authenticity and speak up for yourself and speak up for what you need and I can be a motivating force for you to like drop into your own version of yourself like you connect to yourself and your source connection that's what I want to say so old world mentality is like if you look at religions it's like you will connect to God the religions are saying you will connect to God through me so the religion is putting themselves in a placeholder between you and your source connection God the universe whatever you want to call it Also, governments do this in their own way, which is basically like, we're going to tell you how to live your life. We're going to tell you what's good for you. The medical community also does this. Like, we're going to tell you what's healthy for you. And of course, there's balance. It's not that all of this is evil, but it's more the fact what I'm trying to say is new earth mentality, new earth leadership is 
you have a source connection. I am going to do whatever I can to aid you in reconnecting with your source connection that has always been there. Your source connection understands the best way for you to connect to source, God, the universe. It understands what you need for healthy living within your body, intuitive living, intuitive eating, intuitive guidance all the way through. And also your source connection understands like you and connected to your source understands what your value systems are, what kind of life you want, what is your soul mission. It's like it's like downloading the computer processing system for you to play this game of life in the, the way that you're meant to. That is not on me to tell you how you're meant to do that. That's I have the opportunity to help activate you and guide you back to your own source connection. And then from there is on you. It is your game of life to play. And that's really beautiful because I don't want that responsibility. This is, you know, like... Uh, this is what's beautiful about us growing into a higher vibration is to realize that we all have our own source connection. We are all pieces of, you know, God, the universe, fractaled out, having this beautiful experience of being in the 3D reality, shifting to whatever dimension we're going to next. Some people say 4D, 5D, whatever, whatever. I find these to be words that don't really matter. I think it's just vibrations and energy. We're going somewhere that we've never been before. Well, that sounds really cheesy when I say that, but you know what I mean? We're going somewhere new. We can all feel it because it's like collectively we're on this kind of like, you know, I was talking earlier about like stepping off the ledge. Are we going to fall? Are we going to fly? I feel like collectively people can feel this, that we are on the verge of of something very new and different as a collective. The old way is not working anymore. And people are very much in, like in earnest, they're very much desiring something new. (sighs) And we have the opportunity to repeat history or to start something new. And I think that's really beautiful. And it's going to take each one of us stepping into our power. And by stepping into our power, that means reconnecting to our own source connection. And so I actually view me making these podcasts with you as part of my, I don't want to say job, but like duty, part of my sacred duty and opportunity. um, Because by sharing with you these reminders that you have a source connection, that you can do this. You, you have all of the answers within yourself. I'm just here as an external reminder to tell you to keep going. You're doing great. You know, keep it up. You've got this. Keep, rem- keep believing in yourself. Keep trusting the universe, trusting God, source, that you are perfectly on path. And by me sharing this with you, I really believe this is part of my soul mission. It actually has been channeled to me in many psychedelic trips. And I find that to be really beautiful. Like for me, it gives me a lot of energy when I make these podcasts because I'm like, okay, team, we got this, you know, we're going for it. Come on. I know that it looks really shitty on the outside, but let's go. We got this. (laughs) And the more that you believe that it's working out, the more it actually reflects on the external All of this is a game within ourselves of are we going to trust the universe? Are we going to believe in ourselves? Are we going to allow ourselves to be guided? It's about the surrender. It's about the trust. And for many people, especially if you've had trauma, which most of us have, this trusting, this releasing, this surrendering to the universe is a very hard thing to do. It's our opportunity for growth, you know? And um, I have I have a human design reading in about 15 minutes, but I want to share. There's oh, there's so much more I want to share. I get really excited. It's so funny. I have these moments where I'm like, should I make a podcast today? Oh, I don't know if I have anything to say. And then I get on here and I'm like, ah, I want to talk for like five more hours. <laughs> I have so many things to say. Um, I want to, okay, I want to talk for another 10 minutes about something. Um, so... Sometimes when I'm falling asleep, I get channeled like what I need to say in the podcast. And it's like what I'll see is like in my mind's eye, I will visually see and hear what I am saying in the podcast. It's like a a premonition of like what I'm meant to do next. 
And something that was coming to me the other night was about the feminine, about, um, oh, this is a heavy one for me because it's a very sensitive topic because I have a lot of pain. I think if you're a woman in this world, you have a lot of pain around this subject because as the feminine, we are raised in a world where it is not supportive. Currently, we're shifting this right now, but currently it is not supportive of the feminine energy. It is a masculine, a wounded, let me put that word first, wounded masculine energy that is currently uh, pervading and running the world. So the energy of the divine feminine, which in my opinion is the creativity, the connection, the beingness, the intuit, intuitive connect, connection to source, this is the divine feminine as, at its best. Um, some, I want to read some other, I wrote down some other like things that are also healthy feminine energy. So I was saying it's intuition. Um, this is like the loving energy, playful, expressive, fluid, heart centered. Um, the feminine energy is connecting. It's surrendering. It births, creates, manifests. It's vulnerable. It's compassionate. It's sensual and affectionate. It's connected to nature. It's receptive. It allows itself to receive. It feels safe to receive. And it's so fucking connected to source energy because especially because we have the ability to create life through our womb, we are directly plugged in. Like I like to be like, it's like a, you know, like a plug. We're just like plugged straight into the universe. And um, because of that, we're getting so many downloads just through our intuitive nature by being in these feminine bodies. And a main thing also about the feminine quality is that it's very authentic. It's when, it, when, a f when a woman is, um, so all of us have masculine and feminine energy, but I'm going to speak especially about a, wo a woman, someone born in a female body, body. We have this, when we feel safe, we have this just like, such raw authenticity especially through our emotional reality of just like this is how I'm feeling you know and <laughs> I, w I went to dinner with some girlfriends last night and <laughs> like one of them's like I laid in bed all day and was like crying and was just processing like my divorce and you know all this stuff that's happening this new love that I have it's just like it's all just so much you know and then my other friend's like yeah I had this really beautiful day on the outside but I'm like premenstrual so I went to the sauna and I went to get a massage with my partner and then I just had this meltdown outside the massage parlor where I'm just like non-verbal and my my partner has to be like okay I'm just gonna give you some space like as he was doing his best to show up for her and she just like couldn't handle anything at that moment and I was like yeah right before I was walking afro I was just like sobbing on my bed because I'm just like processing like these different parts of myself that are coming home into my body and realizing you know that I want to show up for myself more and allow myself to express these parts and we're all just like <laughs> we're all just like laughing at how you know, on the surface, it, it's like, what the fuck's going on? Because we emotionally, we're just feel all over the place. But also there is this feeling of connection through how raw and real we are with our emotion and how authentic that is. It's like this feeling of like, we have no fucking clue what's going on, but we're laughing so hard because you know, at least we're in it together. <laughs> and also we're, we're all coming back to the trust that like, it's all working out, you know? And I think that's also really part of the divine feminine is like this. It does not matter what's happening on the 3d because the feminine the divine feminine is so connected to source that it can see what is going to be birthed very soon into the future of this 3d reality. And so it's like holding on to this vision of what the world can be and through that knowingness and that trust, it's like birthing this new creation into the world. Ooh, which is so fucking beautiful. Um, and, you know, I so I wrote, I, I shared this post uh, on my Instagram recently, and it was talking about like, I'll just read it to you. Um, it says like, 
wounded men see, so I was talking about like the divine masculine. And the, the reason why I'm going to share it is because uh, a guy who follows me, a friend of mine follows me on Instagram, asked me, can you, can you please share what is the feminine equivalent to this post? Because I want to know what is divine feminine. So the divine masculine, this post says, wounded men see women as objects to use. Healthy men see women as companions to bond with. Divine men see women as spiritual oracles. They must protect at all costs. I love this so much. I'm going to read it again. <sighs> wounded men see women as objects to use. So that's definitely what we see in society where, you know, the, the wounded masculine who who is like, I need a woman to look perfect and to be perfect and, you know, just kind of like do everything for me around the house and just kind of this like stereotypical man who's just like, you are this object that I'm going to objectify and use accordingly. And then healthy men see women as companions to bond with. So I think this is a lot of men in the world today as we shift. They're like, okay, I want to see you as an equal. Let's equally, you know, live our lives together and be on the same team and, you know, like show up as equals. Nothing inherently wrong with that. My my vote is for the divine masculine, though, which is divine men see women as spiritual oracles they must protect at all costs. And for me, this is when a man is able to be connected enough to their own source connection to understand from an embodied standpoint, like from their bodies, it's like this is like urge to just protect the women around them because they understand like, wow, what the fuck they are they are just like plugged into source and they are so beautiful and you know, like they're, they're transmitting from their source connection constantly through their intuition and through their emotions and just through their, their authenticity and their raw essence of the feminine, which is beauty and creation and connection. And in this 3d world, that is something that needs to be protected and created space for physically. Like I want to, I want to create as much like fit space. I want to, I want to create as much safety for them in the physical so that they can bring, you know, this beautiful spiritual essence to my world. And Wow, that I like my words have a hard time coming out when I think about this because I just think it's so fucking beautiful. It's like, wow, like when a man is like in his divine masculine and he has enough space and capacity to not only hold for himself, but to understand that the women in his life, like the most important thing he can do is to protect the women around him and to understand that they are they are the thing that is his mission, you know? Wow. So to answer the other side from the beautiful man who asked me, what's the female version of this? I wrote this out. I was channeling this as I fell asleep the other night. Uh, it was wounded feminine. See men as perpetrators or objects to manipulate. So like wounded feminine, see men like they're basically wounded feminine are, is in the victim. They are, they are, um, I want to read some of this, um, so wounded feminine energy is like desperate, needy, manipulative, insecure, victim, people pleasing, um, lack of boundaries, anxious attachment. Like this is the wounded feminine. So they're like, okay, every man's out to get me or men are unsafe or they view men as like they're coming from a victim standpoint. And so they view men as something to manipulate in order to get their needs met. So that's the wounded feminine. That's a lot of women in the world. Um, healthy women see men as companions to bond with. So this is kind of the same as the masculine version. It's like, they're like, okay, I'm an equal. You're an equal. Let's just like, you stay over there. I stay over here. But like, we're going to kind of team up sometimes and do certain things together. Excuse me. Um, and then the one that I really resonate with is divine women see men as their earthly protectors and co-creators to bring heaven down to earth. And I'm just like, wow, so beautiful. So again, divine women see men as their earthly protectors and co-creators to bring heaven down to earth. So there's a lot of, um, if you look up like divine masculine, divine feminine, there's a lot of talk around like, 
a divine union, which is like a man and woman who are both spiritually awake and they're choosing to be consciously using the connection that they have together to bring what they call heaven down to earth. And in my version of that, that means that they are, um, they are, I'm just checking the time because I need to go. Um, so in my version of this, it's that women have the direct connection to heaven, which is source, connection, God, universe, and men have the connection to the physical reality. They are here to protect us in the physical realm. And so like men are the, the, the representation of earth and women are the representation of heaven. And when you come together in both of those energies, you're able to bring the best of both into this dimension and like merge them together and co-create something which is what all of us want, which is the best of both worlds. To feel the best in our bodies here in this 3D dimension, to create things in this 3D dimension, like this is what we're here for, we're here to play this game of life, while also feeling intuitively guided and connected to source and that we're on path and we're getting the downloads constantly and we're feeling the best in our bodies and we're connected through our emotions and we're doing all the things in the 3D in the most beautiful way, in the most connected way, in the way that is heavenly, you know? So there's so much more I could say about this, but I need to go and do this human design reading. Um, and I hope that that is something that I know that's something that will be activating um, for you. And I would love to hear more in the comments of whatever, however this lands for you. And yeah, <laughs> there's so much more I could say, but I'm just wishing you a beautiful day and I will see you in the next episode.